All right, we're going to go with uh, 7.14, and it's called Two-Step Inequalities. And in a problem like this, we're going to look at a quick example. And uh, we're going to be collecting some dragonflies. Let's say this is for a school project. Now to collect dragonflies, typically you catch them and then um, you freeze them and you put little pins through them and display them on a board to kind of look at all the differences between them. And um, it's kind of, kind of dark, I guess, but in science you need to catch specimens of whatever you're looking at in order to do it. And um, for this project, we're going to need to collect at least 32 dragonflies. Quite a bit, I guess. And um, say you've already collected three. And you collect two dragonflies per hour. How many more hours until you are done collecting? All right, well, in this case, it's similar to what we've been talking about with inequalities and taking verbal models and turning them into equations. It's just that we're going to be using that inequality instead, because this time we need at least 32 dragonflies. Maybe if we catch more, we can get some extra credit. So I'm going to write um, two things that I know a relationship between. And I'm going to say I, I know the dragonflies are related to the dragonflies total. So I can say that I know I need at least... 32 dragonflies and um, let me make sure that I write this correctly and the number on the other side needs to be greater than or equal to 32 and this is going to be we're going to write a algebraic expression and I'm going to probably use the variable h equals hours because it's easy for me to uh, understand and remember all right so I collect two dragonflies every hour. So I can write 2h and I already have 3 so I can add in the 3 that I've already collected. For this section we're going to be talking about how to solve these. And what's nice is we have a couple of rules that we can use. When solving inequalities everything is the same as an equal sign except for two things first this is the biggest the big trick when we multiply or divide by a negative number the inequality flips second we often graph our answers on a number line Now we're not going to be graphing the ones that we build today on a number line, but we will be graphing them in a couple sections. Okay, so now we can bring this one back down and solve it. We have 2h plus 3 is greater than or equal to 32. All right, my first step, as usual, is going to be getting rid of that adding because I'm going to be unzipping my PEMDAS or kind of going the other direction. P-E-M-D-A-S, remember? Multiplication, division, I kind of group them, they're the same thing. Addition, subtraction, they're really the same thing. And I'm going to be starting and going up this direction as I work backwards through algebra. Okay, I have a plus 3 over here. So to get rid of it, I'm going to do a minus 3. And I have to do a minus 3 to both sides if I'm going to do that. Plus 3 minus 3 is 0, so I can rewrite this as 2h is greater than or equal to 
29 because I subtracted 3. So now I have 2h, trying to isolate my h. I'm going to divide it by 2. I have to divide both of them by 2 because I have to keep it equal. And my 2's cancel off. So I have h is greater than or equal to 29 divided by 2, which should be uh, 14 and a half or 14.5. So my minimum hours I need to spend are 14.5. That's a lot of dragonfly hunting. Lots of hunting. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another quick example. And this one's going to take into effect our little trick and our little rule we have here. Let's look at example one. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one is going to say negative 2n is less than 14. All right, for this, my first step to isolate both sides is to get rid of this negative 2. To get rid of a negative 2, I'm going to divide by a negative 2. But whenever I divide by my negative 2, it comes into effect where I need to flip my inequality. And you can write this a, diff a couple of different ways. You just have to remember as you rewrite the equation going to the next step that you do it. So I have negative 2 and I have n, and I'm going to rewrite it and flip it. So now I have n is greater than 14 divided by negative 2. It's 14 divided by 2, which is 7. And I have a negative, so I'm going to have negative 7. n is greater than negative 7. And that's really the only trick that we're going to be doing. If you feel like you understand this, go ahead and go on. I'm going to do a couple more examples if you're still a little confused. Example 2. Oops, let me put it on the page. A little bit easier that way for you guys to see it. Okay, let's see. Let me find one that I like. Okay. Hmm, some of these they didn't uh, put in our little rule. That seems weird. Negative 4x is less than or equal to 16. All right, this is just a one step, so it's pretty easy. I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 4. And again, I need to flip my inequality when I do this. So I'm going to write x is greater than or equal to 16 divided by negative 4. 16 over 4 is 4. But one of them is negative, so it is stays negative. So I have x is greater than 4. Let me find one more for our last example. All right. Let's take... Let's see, I've got negative 4y plus 2 is greater than or equal to 16. Um, Alright, so now I have my two-step equation. I'm going to start by subtracting 2 from both sides. Those are gone, and I have 4y, negative 4y, is greater than or equal to 16. Divide both sides by negative 4. When I do that, the inequality flips. So I have y, because these are gone, is less than or equal to... 16 over 4 is 4, and it's negative, because one of them is negative. There you go. Hopefully that makes sense, and good luck.